Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning. Today I've decided to do a film analysis on the movie Jaws. I decided to choose the movie Jaws for my final presentation due to the explicit meaning of the cover of the iconic film. The movie Jaws is often imitated, but never duplicated. After the film was re released in 1975, it single-handedly changes the way people viewed going on a vacation to a beach by the ocean. It brought a sense of awareness of what could potentially happen with an enraged shark on the loose hunting its prey in the form of humans. I would like to take a deep dive, no pun intended, to the viewing experience of the film. And more importantly, to the cover of the film. The cover of the film illustrates and lays out a perfect explicit expectation for its potential audience. Me, as a young adolescent teenage boy, I was drawn to the film simply because it had a giant shark rising through the water to devour this naked lady. How cool is that? It didn't disappoint, as in the opening scene of the movie involves this naked lady as she swims out in the ocean and is savagely attacked by the sharp teeth of a great white. This immediately set the tone for my viewing experience. Now, typically when you hear the word horror film, it strictly involves a lot of death activities. Now, Granted, Jaws was not the first movie created about sharks. It was the first successful film of its kind to introduce great white sharks into American horror film. It quickly launched a phobia by the name of Galophobia as one of the world's most common fears. This film did a great job of introducing the aspect of what could happen if you were in open waters in the ocean. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the cover of the film pretty much gives away the plot. You see a shark going after another human being when typically that's not its source of food. Now, as a new town chief, Mr. Brody, he must find out how to stop a violent great white shark from eating its summer vacation, vacationers. What a nightmare. Chief Brody wants to close the beaches to launch an investigation to prevent further attacks that are damaging the reputation of his community. Would you consider Chief Brody a hero in this movie? Some can make the case. Chief Brody is quintessentially a protagonist, while the shark in this classic movie portrays a monster as the villain in this case. Now, Brody is relatable to the audience just because he's a man trying to do the right thing for his community. And just like most of us, he's flawed. He smokes like a chimney. Struggles to fit in with society. And oh yeah, he's got a phobia of water. Due to the fact that he nearly drowned it as a child. But if he's going to dissemble this 25 foot shark, he must overcome these fears. And I enjoyed watching this throughout the movie.
In the process of filmmaking, editing is said to be the most important and essential part of the film. It could either make or break the film. And for this case, the editing in this film enhances the raw footage of the great white shark, bringing this mechanical shark to life by integrating a lot of jump cuts to invoke the feelings of panic and fear for the audience. Let me jump back to the opening scene of the movie where the quote naked lady or Chrissy is being attacked. The camera angle is underwater, which looks up at Chrissy and then the film cuts to eye level and the viewers witness her getting dragged around where she finally gets pulled underwater. I believe one of the most important things about this movie is that, uh, you know, due to, you know, technologically in advancement uh, during this time, you know, they didn't utilize Jaws as much as, let's say, a Godzilla movie would now. Um, it doesn't take away, basically it just doesn't take away from the human character aspect. You know, throughout the, you know, two-hour runtime of this movie, the shark only appears on the screen for a collective four minutes. Yes, I had to look this up. And no, I was not clocking the times throughout the movie. It would have taken away from my viewing experience if I would have done that. So like anybody, I went to Google and found that answer. It should be more... You know, it could have been more, but behind the scenes, Spielberg was faced with a lot of problems with this mechanical shark. He had to get creative due to the lack of dig digital technology available to him. You know, there was times during the movie where he would use bar floating barrels to imitate the shark's movements in the water. In conclusion, this was a great movie. It still stands up to the end of time it's like i said at the beginning often imitated never duplicated thank you this is my film analysis of jaws